So guys, I know I'm a little bit late to this, but I want to rant about this flag and about flag reform in general. So when it comes to flag reform, people usually fall into two camps. People who really, really hate it. Oh, hell no! And uh, CGP Grey. Me though, I got a little bit more of a centrist opinion on the whole thing. Now I know what people have to say about centrists, and it's usually not great. <laughs> But hear me out. Okay, so the average state flag is bad. Uh, seal on the banner designs are ugly and indistinguishable from one another. For this reason, I think that reworking our state flag designs are a good thing overall. However, I completely reject this notion that there's like this strict set of criteria that a flag has to follow to be considered a good flag. So you see, there's this group out there called the North American Vexillological Association. And uh, they made this pamphlet called Good Flag, Bad Flag. And it outlines these five principles people need to follow to make what they consider to be a good flag. Uh, the first rule is keep it simple. The flag should be so simple that a child can draw it from memory. Rule two, Use meaningful symbolism. A flag's images, colors, or patterns should relate to what it symbolizes. Rule three, use two or three basic colors. Limit the number of colors on the flag to three, which contrast well and come from the standard color set. Four, no lettering or seals. Never use writing of any kind or an organization's seal. And last but not least, number five, be distinctive or be related. Avoid duplicating other flags, but use similarities to show connections. Okay, so I will admit, almost every flag that follows these rules looks good. Like, I'm not arguing that they look bad. I just don't necessarily think that any flag breaking these rules looks bad either. To give a little bit of perspective here, um, I just want to talk a little bit about the history of it. So the North American Vexillological Association is largely basing their flag design principles off of European flags, uh, which happen to utilize these principles in their designs already. But why do they do that? You see, European flag design developed out of a maritime tradition as a way of identifying ships from far away. As such, these rules like keeping it simple or having two or three basic colors or not having any lettering were very important. I mean, imagine being on a boat looking at another boat from far away and trying to make out what the text says on it. Like if it had writing on it, trying to read a flag from far away would be really difficult. And it might even be in a different language. You know, the same thing goes for shapes. Like imagine trying to make out whether you're seeing a cat on the flag or a dog on the flag. It would be difficult. But the thing is, flags aren't really used like that much anymore. And especially not state flags. I mean, I doubt Ohio's going out to sea anytime soon. So I guess the question is, what is a flag used for in a modern context? And in my opinion, it's branding. Now, I know I know like a lot of people have a problem with this, like the corporatization of flags or whatever. But, you know, what what else do they do exactly? I mean, they do essentially serve the same function that a logo does, except instead of being a symbol that represents a group or a company or a product or whatever, it represents a place or a people. Now, in my opinion, though, in order to serve this function, a flag does not need to follow any of the rules set by the North American Vexillological Association. In fact, following the rules too closely could be a little bit counterintuitive. Another YouTuber, JJ McCullough, I think I said that right, uh, illustrates this point perfectly by saying, But the five good flag, bad flag rules that are offered up as the surefire recipe for this success have wound up proving rather underwhelming and contradictory in practice, in my opinion, largely because obeying the first four rules often eliminates the possibility of the fifth. Okay, so now that all of that is out of the way, it's time to talk about the new Minnesota flag. So what do I think about it? Uh, fine. I guess. I mean, I don't hate it. It's not ugly, but it's not very interesting either. Is it better than what it was before? Absolutely. Is it good? No, not really. I mean, in my opinion, none of the proposed designs were all that striking to begin with. You know, what I really wish is that when it came to these flag redesigns, 
people were willing to take a little bit more risks with it, be a little bit more bold. I mean, this is better, better than the seal on the banner and all of that. But it's just not fresh. It's not new. It's nothing, nothing about any of these really screams out Minnesota to me. They could just be from anywhere, frankly. I mean, sure, making it a little bit more simple does have the effect of making it more distinctive. But that's only to a point. I think the two rules that hold back flags the most are the idea that it can't have any lettering or seals, or this idea that a child has to be able to draw it from memory. I mean, there's a lot of great flags out there that don't follow these rules. Uh, For example, the California flag is iconic, and it breaks these rules very brazenly. I bet you could also recognize this flag, despite the fact that it has lettering on it. I mean, really, what would be so bad about slapping the state bird or the state flower onto the new Minnesota flag or any other flag for that matter? I don't know. That's just my two cents. But uh, thanks for sticking around for my rant. Uh, By the way, guys, we got the second Chinese warlord video on its way. Uh, It's cooking as we speak. The Salem vlog is also in the works, but don't expect it too soon. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed this new segment, Blue Stool Rants. Uh, It's kind of like a little bit more of an informal thing, more opinion based, not so much about history, usually just about current topics. I don't know. Let let us know if this is something you want more of in the future. Uh, I'm also working on a new segment about weird cults, which was suggested by an internet friend of mine. Uh, It may end up being a series of its own. Uh, It depends what you guys think. We're just throwing a lot at the wall right now and seeing what sticks. Um, Don't worry, though. We're still committed to making our regular weird history topics, so stay tuned for more of that. Anyways, if you've made it this far, please consider liking and subscribing. And please hit that bell. We don't upload super regularly, so YouTube probably won't even show you our videos if you don't. Anyways, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.